This is a hard video to make. On one hand, Cyberpunk 2077 is a complete mess. An example of what happens when you slowly grow a rabid and emotional fan base. When you give your followers everything they want and more, only to set them up with impossible expectations for the future. When you craft a beloved game and follow it up with one that can barely run for a large portion of your supporters. When you fail to take onus on your own leadership responsibilities and let everyone down. And yet, even with all the problems, even with all the claims that without bugs this game is still not worth your time, I can't help but shake the feeling. The feeling that the game I played, while not perfect, was harboring something truly special. Something I fear because of the outrage, because of the failed expectations, and because of the rampant hate some people are missing. Cyberpunk 2077 is not the game people believed it to be. But nonetheless, the heart, the core of this game, is something that deserves so, so much more. Got no idea who I am. Mano, the genes were fine, Barry. You've been a strong son of a bitch, huh? Don't survive in Night City by being weak. Fear isn't a weakness. It's there to protect you. From <laughs> what? Losing myself? Becoming a stranger in my own body? You're scared because you've given up on your dreams. What happened to becoming the best in all of Night City? Imagine we're deployed together, fighting in a war, side by side. Would you take a bullet for me? I would. Yeah. I... Shit, I can't do this! Now will you come and arrest me, you pussies? One more thing, Mr. V. Quiet life or blaze of glory? Hmm? The reason I made this intro, besides the fact that I like making you guys sit through my montages, is because it was the only way I could express what makes Cyberpunk 2077 so great. No matter what I tell you about the game or how I explain it, words cannot capture what it is like to truly experience it for yourself the first time. The emotion the characters bring, the poignant moments of stillness and retrospection, and the dance the narrative plays between harshness and soft caringness. The majority of the narrative around this game has not been about this. Rather, instead, we have laser focused in on what makes this game bad. And for good reason, this game was a lie. Before CD Projekt Red released this story into the wild, we were told it would be accompanied by features, competent AI systems, and most of all, a game that could run above 20 FPS and didn't crash. So rightfully so, it was lambasted at its release. But funnily enough, the emotions surrounding this game and the hopes and dreams of those that followed it for years were so battered and tarnished that in its wake we are left with nothing but a boulevard of broken dreams and a never-ending cycle of hate and disappointment. Hell, go to the Cyberpunk game subreddit right now. Quite honestly, a lot of the posts and memes degrading the game are quite funny, but even more so, they're sad. Even a year after the game, people continue to come in day in and day out to trash on a product that, contrary to popular belief, does have a lot of greatness. But I'm not here to tell you whether or not you should still be mad about the release of this game. That's for you to decide. I'm here because over the past year, every time I asked my Twitch chat if they liked Cyberpunk, they said no. They said the game was boring, uninteresting, and broken. But as I queried further, in almost every instance, I found that they had not even played the game or played so little that they could barely speak about it without a fundamental misunderstanding of what the game was and wasn't. 
Just as in politics and almost all of social media today, the majority of people's opinions were being formed not from their own experience, but from the experience of others. So I want to offer a new perspective. That even with all the problems the game objectively does have, it still is one of the most meaningful experiences I have had in gaming ever. Cyberpunk 2077 starts strong. You are immediately thrust into a strange new world with a 30 minute intro depending on what life path you choose. For me personally, the best choice is surely Nomad. As an outsider to the city, your character most closely resembles you, someone totally new to Night City itself. And even more so, it's the intro that best sets up the relationship between you and Jackie, as it's the only one that shows the moment the two characters meet in their journey to becoming best friends. But this intro is also the start of a wide array of complaints we hear constantly about the game. Originally, CD Projekt Red made it seem as if the life paths would last hours and change our gameplay throughs radically, but this just isn't the case. After a mere half hour intro for each, we are met with a short montage of us going on adventures with Jackie and we're thrust into the main game. The real starting point, no matter whatever choice you make. And as you continue through the game, based on your life path, you will have multiple dialogue options with different characters. But the more you play, especially on second playthroughs, you notice how little these matter in most cases. There surely are examples where life paths change outcomes, like talking to Meredith Stout as a corpo and calling her on her BS, revealing story implications, but overall, the more you play the game, and the more playthroughs you do, you start to see just how little some of the promise systems matter. Life paths don't have as big of an effect as we hoped. Dialogue decisions barely change the story except for the final ending moments. Waving guns in people's faces produces no genuine reactions. Police and AI combat is so dumb in some cases that it would be offensive to AI to even call it that. But none of that matters. Because where Cyberpunk 2077 fails in all these key areas, it delivers in even more crucial ones. For instance, yeah, maybe the life pass didn't change too much except for some flavor dialogue. But why does that really matter? Who cares how much the journey changes if the journey isn't good at all in the first place? And luckily for Cyberpunk, the journey is where it shines. Sometimes your decisions don't matter as much as they do in other games, like Fallout New Vegas, but I'd be damned if those moments you have in this game don't outshine entire other games themselves. When you first meet Judy, she's brash and blocked off. She introduces you to brain dances and then barely has a word for you as you leave. But over time, over hours of exploring the deepest and darkest parts of the city, underground snuff BD filmmakers kidnapping her best friends and betrayals the likes of only Night City can produce, she opens up. A sad, hurt, broken character slowly reveals herself to us. Before where she struggled to open up, now she cries on our shoulder. And most importantly, you feel this. You feel her pain, her struggle, her sadness. And you can relate, after all, who couldn't with what she's been through. But the game doesn't stop there. After the suicide of those she felt most close to, Judy starts now to find a new bond in you, the player. And the game does something else most other games don't have the courage to do. It slows way down. There are later missions with Judy in the game that involve nothing but crawling through the environment at a snail's pace as she talks to you about her childhood, her dreams, her depression, and the godforsaken world she is pained by being a part of. This is what makes Cyberpunk so great. Where other games like Grand Theft Auto are about the thrill, being chased by cops in your new car, firing rocket launchers into the sky, and experiencing a story like a Hollywood movie, Cyberpunk is much more slow, methodical. Each and every character you meet is so well crafted, so deep, and so meaningful. They feel like real people, with real issues, and at their core, a need and desire to feel loved. 
When I think back to playing games like Grand Theft Auto, the game most commonly compared to Cyberpunk, I think about the high adrenaline and fun missions, laughing with friends as we watch the story unfold in wacky new ways. However, with Cyberpunk, I think about the moments. That time Pan Am denied me on the couch, only to show her true feelings the next morning. That moment I first leapt into the water with Judy. That moment with Takamura, a man bastardized by society, opening up about his childhood and why he lives the life he does. And it totally makes sense. I think about the swell of music as I rev the engine of the newest motorcycle I bought and turn the bend and am met with the most beautiful game city of all time. And yes, that city does have questionable AI. Many doors are locked. The world doesn't feel as alive as Red Dead Redemption 2, where characters will react to anything and everything you do. But that isn't the point. That is not, and it will never be what makes this game so damn good. It doesn't mean the game wouldn't be better with these features. Trust me, I want more competent open world as bad as you guys, but no matter how much this game improves, it won't change the core, the soul of this game, the characters, story, and journey you go on with each. I have never in any game, maybe any media entirely, whether that be books, movies, or television, felt this connected and engrossed in a world. Cyberpunk fails in so many ways, in ways that will result in many of you giving up on the game before giving it a chance. And rightfully so, will result in many of you playing the entire game and still hating it. But if you know what this game is about and what it's not, then you may just have a masterpiece before you. It's the difference between fun and fulfillment. If I had to hazard a guess, a lot of people probably have more fun playing Grand Theft Auto V, or a lot of other games for that matter. But without a shadow of a doubt, as someone who has played both, Cyberpunk 2077 is much, much more fulfilling. And that's a big distinction. It is a fun, memorable, and impactful watching how the NPCs in Red Dead Redemption 2 react to any and everything you throw at them in believable ways. To shoot off tires in a car in GTA and see how it handles differently. But nothing is as fulfilling as experiencing the story of Cyberpunk. I know other games like Red Dead 2 have their moments. I think back to the time I listened to this music as Arthur rode his horse through the forest. But it's not the same. The key to cyberpunk, what so many are missing, is just how great the characters are, how the story unfolds, the immaculate voice acting from all the cast. How you can go from hating Keanu Reeves and his asshole persona to somehow loving him and respecting him in the end. In fact, the game is actually really fun, too. Somewhere along the way, people started acting like this game wasn't an RPG. But more than most games these days, you get so many choices in combat. I can be a hacker sneaking in the shadows, a crazy maniac with a sword that slices heads off in an instant, a shotgun wielding badass, or someone that avoids conflict entirely. The game gives you so many options in a deus ex, immersive sim light world, my favorite genre of all time. Even the hundreds of side missions in the game have interesting stories, dialogue, and ways to tackle each mission that keep it fresh. The community is so laser focused on each bug, glitch, and missing promise that it almost seems like we have forgotten things the game does so well. In the end, your choices don't matter. The AI leaves much to be desired, and the game is so full of bugs it would make Bethesda proud. That doesn't mean it isn't great though. The core of the game, the thing that separates all great games from good, is all there interesting story and characters, truly meaningful and emotional moments that make you think and question your real life, combat that isn't mind-numbing half-ass shooting over and over again in environments that could use more thought, a world that, yes, could be more reactive, 
but at its core is the best designed and best looking city and world you have ever seen, assuming you have the hardware to support it, and jaw-dropping nonetheless if you don't. And before you say anything, yes, that's coming from someone who's played on a high-end PC and the original Xbox One when the game came out. I feel like I had to make this video because while Cyberpunk 2077 is not in any way a perfect game, it is one that seems to be hated more than I think it should. CD Projekt Red did let us down, and they should be held accountable for releasing a product they shouldn't have on consoles that could barely support it. But I am so tired of people acting like this game's heart and soul isn't something special. Acting like Grand Theft Auto, Red Dead Redemption, and so many other games are better in every single way when they just aren't. I understand the anger, the vitriol, but truly this game is a masked masterpiece. A game that is so immaculate, yet so broken at the same time. And I fear because of the relentless hate that this game receives, it may never reach its potential. Maybe the AI will never be improved. Maybe we will never get giant patches that fix the game. But I hope to God we do. Because this game could be truly revolutionary for many more people if CD Projekt Red just doesn't give up on it. Improve performance as much as possible. Improve AI. Add wanted systems like car customization, hair and body styling, and more open doors and stores. Craft new expansions, including DLC for the gangs of Night City, we all want to know so much more. And expand upon the characters and its stories you have already so masterfully crafted. Give us more meaningful choice and dialogue that affects the side stories and outcomes of the world itself. And more than anything, don't fucking give up on this game. While it seems like so many people have, Thousands gather every day on forums across the internet to shit on everything you made. As much as they want to say it's because they hate the game, rather, it's because they love it, or they want to. The game is so close to being a masterpiece, and all you have to do is take that mask off. This story and its characters need to be seen, heard, and experienced by more people in its entirety. At the end of the day, I really love Cyberpunk 2077 if you can't tell. And that doesn't mean you have to as well. You may disagree with me on some of the points or opinions I have. I only ask you to do one thing. If you haven't experienced this game to its fullest, if you gave up on it because everyone else did, give it a chance. A moment to capture you like it did for me. Because even with all the problems that I too agree this game has, I have never wanted more ever. I have never anticipated DLC and future content more than I have here. For my entire life, every time a games company made a game, when I finished, I wanted them to move on to the next big thing, no matter how great the game was. That's just the type of gamer I am. But for the first time in my life, I don't want a Witcher 4. I don't want a new IP. I want CD Projekt Red to build upon this one. Because more than any other game before it, this game has truly left a mark on me. And I have seen just how great it could truly be. One day, far in the future, I hope we can look back and realize just how great Cyberpunk 2077 really was. I totally understand that. What I think is unarguable is the characters are phenomenal. And I think if you don't think the characters are phenomenal, you're wrong. And that's fine to have your own opinion, but I would argue that to the fucking death. So thanks for watching, guys. This actually wasn't the next video I originally planned on doing. This was supposed to be a deep dive on the MMORPG games and design for their future of the genre. 
but I've been playing Cyberpunk 2077 again in my free time, off stream. And playing again, I saw so many more of the faults, but even more so couldn't help but fall in love with what the game does right again. I know this isn't a popular opinion to have, but it's truly what I believe, and I wanted to be a new voice into the echo chamber of madness I've been coming across and looking into the past year. So thank you guys so much for the support. Every view, every comment, and every person that takes the time to support me means so much. And I hope you guys all have a great day. And as always, I'll see you next time.